All right, Jason with LiveScope Addicts. Uh, I wanted to show you guys something that I do here. Before I send these out, I'm building a couple of units here and a lot of people ask questions about calibrating your compass. And it's really, really important with the way that the AHRS system in Garmin works and the way that it, uh, you know, there's so many elements in these transducers and the way that it seems all of them together has a lot to do with AHRS. And basically AHRS is um, attitude heading reference system. And it basically tells, tells everything what's level, what's straight, everything, how everything seemed together. And it just really makes a big difference in the image. So a lot of people don't use it. A lot of people don't think so, but I am pretty confident in that. So I'm gonna show you guys here, come in a little bit. You don't have to have this thing in the water to do this. Let's see if I can get the screen. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your live scope screen and menu, sonar setup, installation, and here you have use AHRS and then you have calibrate compass. I'm gonna calibrate the compass. Here it's gonna say turn the boat one and a half times in either direction uh, turn quickly and keep the boat level and steady while turning. Um, if the if it's mounted to a trolling motor, the trolling motor should be off and deployed. So what they want you to do essentially is to have this thing in the water on your trolling motor and they want you to drive your whole boat one and a half times in a circle. Okay. Um, a lot of us are using these for ice fishing and other stuff where you have them on a pole. It doesn't have to be in the water. It doesn't have to be on the boat. It doesn't, you could have the, if you're on a boat, you can have the boat on the trailer in a parking lot. You could do it one and a half times around. It's not as critical as what a lot of people think. So here's how we're going to do this, right? It's a little bit tricky to do it when you're just holding it, but it could definitely be done. Sometimes it takes a couple, a uh, couple rounds to do it, but we'll see here. So you're going to hit begin and it's going to show calibration. Okay. All we're going to do is we're going to turn this one and a half times very steadily. Okay, came through and it says failed. This happens a lot. Magnetic environment, 75%. My spin quality was 39%. It's crap. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try it a bunch of different times until we get it. So here we go, we're gonna begin. Failed again, okay, retry, begin. Success, I felt that one, that one felt good. Spin quality, 57%. Magnetic environment, 78%. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I'm not going to say that that's the best calibration in the world, but it's so much better than no calibration at all. 57%. What you could do, you know, if you're using it on the ice, you can, um, once you get it in your pole and you get the pole and everything in the water, you could do it again. Kind of give your, give your cable some pre-twist here like this, and that way once you do it, you know, hold your pole nice and steady and then twist it nice and steady. And then you'll get a really you'll get a good one, but that's plenty fine right there. And what this is going to do now, what you'll see here, is that you get this boat icon up here, and that is going to swing. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can get this a little better here. Okay, right up here. So you get that icon and you take this transducer here and you can see it. As I'm turning it, that's turning, okay? That's how this is working, all right? Now if we go to our maps, if we go to our maps, okay, you'll see here. Now when I zoom in, you'll see this panoptics area showing that right there. Now I'll do another thing here. I made a combo map already here. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to go way out. Wrong one. That would help. I'm going to go way out, like just for, just to show this, 180 feet. All right, now we're going to go back to the map. Now you see how big that area is? This distance is 180 feet right here. So what it's showing me, I can tell you with all certainty, this river is in that direction from my house right now. I am pointing directly at that river. So as I'm doing this, it's the same direction. My, I'm inside the house, so my GPS is getting a little wonky with direction. But even so, this 
is definitely in the direction that it's going. So what that does is when you're fishing, let's say you're on a lake and you wanted to, you know, you're over in here and you're up in this area and you wanted to scan off of this drop off. That boat icon will be there and it'll show your panoptics area where you're actually pointing. So if you want to come here and you want to go off this little point that's here, you know, you could bring the boat over here and when you turn, you can show that your panoptics area is coming off of this. You know, or you could be over here and when you scan, it'll show the direction you're pointing off of that. So you know exactly. Another thing that really, I mean, in my opinion, this is one of the be the biggest benefits to this is that you can, it's going wonky on me, is that you can set a waypoint okay so let's just say for instance that i'm on live scope and i'm going around and i see a bunch of um whatever i see some fish out here schooled up i can click here i can drag it here and go 130 feet okay i'm going to go back to that okay and i'm going to add a new waypoint okay now when i go back to this and i go back to the map that waypoint is right there now i know that on the live scope, I just set a waypoint right there 130 feet away. So now all I have to do is drive my boat around to that and drive it to there. And I still know that as I'm scanning here, that that spot there is what I'm seeing. So if I was still seeing fish 130 feet out from where I am, I know, okay, it's in that panoptics area. That is where I'm pointing it. So in my opinion, you know, that is one of the the biggest tools that so many people don't use when it comes to live scope and makes a huge difference. It makes a really big difference in efficiency and in the ability to locate um, locate fish, locate structure, locate everything with the live scope and then you pin it and go right there with the map and then it's it's really easy to find. The other big thing is that if you do have those waypoints, you don't want to be driving over the top of them to locate them. So if you have a waypoint, you can stay off at 150 feet, uh, you know, scope your, your live scope out a ways. Then when you get over to it, you can show on your map that you're swinging over and you're highlighting, you're on that waypoint with your live scope. It'll show on the map that your panoptics area is in that, that waypoint is in that. So you know that stump that is your waypoint, you're seeing it before you're ever even near it. So if there is fish there, you don't want to blow them off it or scare them. You go over there, get stay a little ways away from it, show scan it with your live scope, and then you know what you're actually scanning is what you're trying to, and your waypoint that actually is there. So I hope that helped out. If you have any other questions, go ahead and drop a comment or post in the group is better off because my messenger just blows up constantly. So if you could post things in the group, that way that everyone can get them answered instead of just one person, that would definitely cut down on me having to personally answer every one person's question. So, catch you later.